<sighs> the time has come. My Jojo Bizarre Adventures review. And what do I think about this anime? It's bizarre. I don't know if I was just overstating that, but um, yeah, I would give this anime, before I even talk about it, this anime, 10 out of 10, it's already became one of my favorites of all time, and I thank you for the man who commented about waiting so long for the JoJo review, and I said I would watch it for you, my man, so shout out to you, whoever commented that on my video, but um, I, I'm glad I watched it. But I was kind of disappointed that I should have watched it earlier. Because now it's just like, damn. When is part 6 coming out? So, um, I watched it on Verb, ladies and gentlemen, for JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. And it has four seasons and there's five parts to it. So, let me um, take a look at this. So, there is one in JoJo's that it does like a re-edit or something that... That shows like the whole, basically the whole part of the, like, uh, anime. But it's like a movie. So there's Jojo like Bizarre Adventures re-edit or something. And it shows episode part one, Phantom Blood. Then episode, excuse me, two, part two, Battle Tendency first half. And then episode three, part three, Battle, Battle Tendency second half. So I really enjoy that. But they haven't done that for... Uh, the Star Crusaders, or um, Diamond Unbreakable, or um, Golden Wind. So yeah, I'm going to talk about everything, one by one, and what I think about this anime, I love it very much. It is, again, already 10 out of 10. I don't even need to talk about the reading at the end. I'm talking about this now. JoJo is a perfect 10 out of 10 in my book, in my opinion, Okay, I enjoyed watching every single part, every single episode of this anime. I get so hyped up watching this anime. And I did know a bit about this anime, but only through the memes and everything. I never got in the full context of like, um, the world, oh, yes. Yes, I'm gonna say the world like that because of fucking Dio. But, um, yeah, I... I have seen, like, memes of, like, dojo references, but, you know, I never get the whole context behind of everything. And I finally gave it a try. And the first episode of Phantom Blood, it, it really blew me out of the waters because I literally got hyped up all on, on the first episode. Like, I didn't, I wasn't excited. Like, you know, it was just like, you're all right and everything. And I think I forgot how the first episode was, but I think it was either Dio or Jo Jonathan like punching one of each other and I got excited I was like oh shit like that was just like a big flip around and then I proceeded to watch more and nonetheless I'm quite satisfied of watching all five parts and I can't wait for the sixth part if it's ever going to come out this year or next year I think if correct me if I'm wrong for, God, for those who watch Jojo I don't know if Jojo Bizarre's Adventures happens once like the whole like a part all the JoJo happens every two years or so, but I'm pretty sure it is every two years. Like, we get a new part of JoJo, but correct me if I'm wrong about that. But um, for JoJo, JoJo is the only anime right now that I love every single one of its openings besides the second opening for Part 3 and then the second opening for Part 5. Like, every single other opening for Parts 1 through 5 I love all of it. I get so hyped up, and I really love the opening of it. I think it was, um, what is it, part, like, yeah, all part one, two, three, I don't know. No, I don't think four and five does it, but parts one through three, what they, how they did their openings was 3D, and I, and I was ast I was astonished by that. Like, the way they did their openings from Dave, Dave's Productions, I gotta, like, top my hat off to you. Because the way you do your openings 3D and with this great music that goes along with it, it was just perfect. I, I listen to it, like, pretty much every single day. Like, yeah, I listen to music, but, you know, the weave side of me wants to listen to, like, all the openings of JoJo. 
part one by on Phantom Blood, it really got me hyped up. As I, as you would see Jonathan on the stairs, and then like Dio like over here trying to do the elbow dab knee or something. Like it's really funny. And then part two of Battle Tendencies opening, mm, love it so much. Part three's opening, love it even more. Part four, mm, just all of them good vibes. Part five. Mm, it's just so 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 good like they like the all the op- like the music man the music of and the opening like how they did it really well i never i never loved this many openings in an anime before i think i only watch or only love one one per like anime so like for example i only like the first opening for um Fire Force, or I only love opening Eleven for Fairy Tale. I only love opening um, what is that? I watched I watched a lot of anime, so I can't remember all the openings from the top of my head. But um, I love uh the first yes the first opening for Doctor Stone. Just like I don't I really give like all the openings a chance for me to like you know like see if like all right can I like vibe with it or not? But no, like JoJo literally like literally like i love every single opening besides parts three of the set of the second opening and then part two or opening two with golden wind so so um yeah so i want to get this one out of the way so like i want to talk about each of the parts and then i want to talk about again three things my favorite part my favorite opening and my favorite joe star or any of the protagonists because um Giero, Giero, Girono, I think I'm saying his name wrong, but you know the blonde, the blonde motherfucker in part five. So I'm gonna tell you guys who's my favorite and all that. But yeah, part one with Phantom Blood, it was it, it was a neat little introduction that shows the the mask and everything, and that you just needed blood to become a fucking vampire. Like Dio already just became a vamp vampire. I think he fucking like I almost cried when Jonathan's dad died. Like, I was about to cry over that, and it, and it was like, it did not even take me that long to even, like, get through, like, maybe past 12 episodes of an anime, usually, to, like, fall in love with the character. I, I was already, like, rooting for Jonathan from the start, ever since he fucking kicked Dio's ass. I was like, mmm, that's my man Jonathan, but he's also a gentleman, and that's what I love about his character in Phantom Blood, so... I love his character just being an overall gentleman and they really took a really difference of how they progressed on with different events throughout the Joestar timeline because basically in parts 1-2 they use Harmonon, Harmonon which is just like this kinetic energy like you have in you and then parts 3 and three four and five is just basically you know a stand i don't know i forgot the explanation of a stand so please do not make me rethink about what a stand is i can't i sort of know what a stand is but i can't just explain it same thing with hominon i i like i i like i just know who has it or who doesn't so yeah so joe jonathan um Jonathan just learns how to use it and just like fucking kicks Dio's ass and everything. And I really do feel bad that this um, part one of Phantom Blood only has 13 episodes. I don't really have any complaints about the pacing of how they took it. It was just that I felt like Jonathan should have just lived out his life the way he wanted to. But he just can't. And I just like I feel so bad for him. Like I really wanted him to live his life with the woman that he was married to. But like it was just like I was just like. Like, I was, I, was, I was just really sad, man. Like, I wanted my boy Jonathan to live his life. But, like, man, it did not happen. So, I, w- I was not upset nor disappointed. It was It's just, like, how the plot goes, man. You can't really blame the, how the plot goes and how it, you know, transgressed further on. But, uh, yeah, like, great great introduction to for JoJo. I think, like, most people would not even, like think think about this because i have seen this on what is it when it was like my my first year of high school being a freshman one of my uh friends he was wearing a jojo like jacket or something and it was jo- uh, and it was um what is it jo- jotaro kujo so i'm like oh okay 
but like you know i really never seen like any of the characters besides like it was only referencing memes of parts three and further on not really with the first two parts so it's just like i feel like parts one and two don't get like enough recognition that they deserve from parts you know three four and five because you know i feel like in my point of view i feel like that's what people tend to view more not really in the first two parts but i don't know why i feel like there are great parts so yeah part one for fans of blood great introduction and everything I really love the characters that was in it like again r.i.p for my man jonathan he should have lived out his life but man damn that deal and you know i'm not even surprised that he came back in part three so for part two battle tendency i love joseph Joestar. he is by far one of the best character best joe's um best like joe star ever even though he's technically not a gentleman like his grandfather jonathan was he is different in his own way and i really love that i really did not want every protagonist to be exactly the same like you know you want them to be different unique in their own ways and everything and you want them to be you know them how they are and you know see their goals and motivation throughout the end and you know how it you know all ends up being all nice and well like a you know like a neat little bow tie for yeah but for part two battle of tennessee i enjoyed it with the with that good ass opening and with john with joseph oh man i really love that the plot was um it was not that much confusing like i kind of understand it did relate a little bit to the first part for phantom blood but you know it was a little bit different but there was like different enemies like ever that you know that i like i i'd seen and for you know for joseph to battle as well but i find his character very funny optimistic and he always has his sense of humor and i just love every time when like i this is like my favorite part of joseph like he just predict he doesn't predict it's i don't know what to call it like he says next you're gonna say this like like my man is psychic he could just predict that he could he basically knows what you're gonna say before you even say it and he literally says it with you what why after he says he knows you're gonna say it. so he's gonna say like now you're gonna say that how does he know that was in my pocket and then whoever he was talking to is gonna say exactly like that like like what more to it to this man that already makes him a great character i will I just love it so much. And it all resolves good at the end. There were so mysteries about his parents and his parents and 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 everything. And I'm glad there was some a bit of closure on that because he, you know, there he was told about some lie. But you know, happy endings at the end. Really love his character very, very much. Um for for part two, I feel like it was, you know, sort of close to being how part one was, how Dio became like a vampire and everything. But you know, it was different. We had a different set of um antagonists for part two of Battle Tendency. But you know what? All the characters was great. Speedwagon, oh my gosh, I forgot he was in part one as well for um <clears throat> for phantom blood love him i think yeah he only he only lives for only for only part one and two so rip my man speed wagon for being single because that's how he died being single rip for my man there but um for part three so i love so i'm gonna i'm gonna get this one out of the way i love old man joseph a lot more like no not a lot more i love like old man joseph that makes me love his character a lot more because the one thing that he does in part three and everybody knows this when he says oh one like his voice actor just talks in english i swear it is one of the funniest things i ever seen in jojo just him just like his voice actor just talking in american is the funniest thing ever and i will sometimes i would go back go to youtube and type in um jojo oh my gosh and it it just shows like a whole compilation of him saying oh no and oh my god like i would laugh my ass off because he would just just like saying it but like his his um voice actor just did a such a good job just like talking in english it made me like 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 i would like laugh if he just just, just like talks like that in, in like english then he does in japanese like 
oh help me oh my god like i would just laugh like fucking like his like his that voice actor just did an amazing job like oh i just love old man joe i just love Oh man, Joe. So I really love jo- Joseph Josar a little bit more because of that, and I really got to give props to his um, voice actor for just even doing that in the first place. Really hilarious. But um, for part three, um, I you know I started to love it. You know, jo- um, JoJo's even more and more, and the plot hits a, a little bit differently. But it was, I think, it was not too much of a cliche. It's like something I've seen before. Like you have to travel across or meet the, you know, the antagonist and have a one-on-one battle, and then you know you come out as victorious. But like the journey was like very, very notorious. It really, it literally separated in two different parts because I think like for the Star, for yeah, for part three of Star Crew. Stardust Crusaders, there was only like, I think like 20 or 30 something uh, episodes, and then they did another one, like a whole another not season, but just like a continuation and I think that one was just like 30 or 20 something episodes but um, I really enjoyed all all the characters, Av- Avado um, Avado Profondo, uh, the French guy, I'm not even going to say his name correctly um, I forgot his name, I know it starts with a K, but his, um, stand name is, um, or not his stand name, like his attack was um, a Spash, I think it's like Kano Jun or something like that, I'm pretty sure someone's gonna get mad at me for saying his name wrong down below in the comments, um, yeah, I really enjoy all those characters, I just felt like, and Iggy too, I love Iggy, but like the thing was, I didn't like how it was just like, all the all just basically enemies being thrown left and right i did enjoy it well i did enjoy the whole like part three of um star stardust crusaders i love it when they fight enemies but it's just like i just felt like it was just like i feel like they were overdoing it like yes i get it that they either work for deal they serve their loyalty to him because of the flesh bug or like you know they prom or deal promised the, whoever it was for money or fame and all that. So yeah, that's like not really nothing too new. Like we all know, if if they face like a new type of enemy, it's either they serve loyalty to him or they just you know pay or he just promised them to payment and everything. But I just didn't like how it was just being thrown left and right, more enemies, more enemies, more enemies. But nonetheless, they did fight. Excuse me, different types of enemies, which just, you know, makes the battle, makes the fight scenes a little bit more unique. It doesn't have to be, like, repetitive and everything, like, you know, like, they just pop out their stands to start fighting. You know, they just come up with their, like, Jotaro's, Kucho's gang, just, you know, they just come up with smart and different ways, you know, to beat their enemies. So, yeah, that, that was, like, entertaining. So, I was glad it was, they, it was entertaining because I didn't enjoy, like, you know, like, enemies are just being thrown left and right at Jotaro's group like that, but um, for Jotaro, uh, Jotaro Kujo as his character, I really dig it of uh, him being like a real tough guy and everything. The only thing I did not like about his character is how he just treated his mom. He just called his mom a bitch. I'm like, nah, you don't you don't call your mom that. <laughs> but everything else of his character, it, it was just you know like I think it was yeah he was he's a high schooler so you know it's kind of relatable to have that type of um uh what is it like a stage like through some high school boys are going through like they're just like like a tough like having like a tough guy like phase and everything that's what jojo kujo is representing like the tough guy um high school phase so you know i really enjoyed it again i the all the joe stars they're all unique to have their own different personalities in their own ways so you know i was quite satisfied satisfying at the ending and i was really surprised that jotaro can fucking use the wall though too as well like stop time to have that ability that's literally the most overpowered thing ever and i thought deal was the only one who could you know use it so yeah part three of stardust crusaders really great in my in my books really 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 good just it's just really good so Part 4 of Diamond is Unbreakable. I love the opening on this one. Basically, it was just all about 
good vibes. That's all what I got from the opening. Just good vibes. And I really enjoyed this part more specifically. Because and the other three parts, it was just standard like, oh yeah, there's like bad guys you gotta fight, you know, you gotta fight like for part one of Dio and then part two of the these Agent Stone people that came like these three like yeah stone gods or whatever in part two battle tendencies and then in part three you know back to fighting dio again but that but then in part three or not in part three but in part four it does something a little bit different they introduce the antagonist later but not now specifically and what i love how they did part four which makes it really unique than the other ones is just how they treat the the stand users on this one and I really enjoyed it in this one because, you know, in the, like, let me make this comparison. So in part four, it's just basically not all enemies are stand users, you know, so like, um, for part four, it's basically an, um, a bow and arrow that creates, um, you know, people to bring out their stand users abilities. And some people can either take it as a good way or a bad way to use it for their selfish needs or for people to use it for whatever they want, for whatever passion that they want. And that is great. That's what makes part four unique from the other, um, four parts as well because not it it's not always just like villains which just stand powers and they just want to kill them for like for money or whatever there's actually other people in part four that has stands stands of their own and they don't use it to attack um josuke and his group because in one part there's this one girl that likes coin chan really really much and her stand is basically her hair or there's this one where this chef guy was using his stand to you know to make people some health better and to enjoy their meals i really love that like it doesn't need to be people with stand users to you know to fight them because you know they're bad and everything i love how they're just you know ordinary people that just use their stands for something that's not bad at all and that's what i have to get credit for part four for because they just like make it unique in that way and i really have to give them credit for that it's really amazing how they did it for it and nonetheless josuke i love his character i love when he gets really pissed off if someone talks shit about his hair this motherfucker would go berserk if you would talk shit about his hair and that was just the most funniest thing and you know jotaro comes back uh, uh, as well and so does um old man joseph just for the oh my god one more time really memorable in my book but yeah i'm glad that jotaro um came came back because i was wondering what does like each of the timeline release like all together like what events like you know would lead Jotaro to go to this town where Josuke is, you know, um, the old man Joseph's son because he had an affair and his wife is really angry. But you know, it's really funny, <laughs> really funny how um, Jotaro described um, how his um, grandma was. But um, yeah, love love the characters and everything. And um, got nothing more to say. But, uh, yeah, let's go on to part five. So for part five, it takes things a little bit differently. So how they did for part five, I, it really set the same boundaries that they did with, um, <clears throat> with part four, because with part four, there's different people with stand users ability and they use it for, you know, for whatever they want, not good or bad, well, basically both. But um, for part five, it's basically not related to the whole Joestar bloodline or anything, but it just relates to how in part, what is it, part three, when Jotaro um, kills Dio, it's basically like this little theory in part five that Jotaro doesn't know if the this kid named jo, Jono Giovanni, I think I said his name right, that he's actually Dio's son, or just his clone but a little bit different but um yeah his character basically changed because he had black hair but now he just has his golden blonde hair and his eyes love his eyes and um he wanted to um basically um, kill what is it Puchatsi's boss become the the new boss and just for <clears throat> just for everybody to not have drugs or anything to stop kids and ability to take to not use drugs that's basically his um that's basically um uh, 
John of, oh my gosh, John of, I'll just call him John of, that's basically what John of's dream was. And with the help of Puccetti and, Puccetti and his gang, it, you know, it got to all of that to the end. And it really did, um, left me with a couple of surprises that I didn't think it was in, uh, was gonna happen in Cold and Wind. It really caught me off guard with some of the stuff that I really did not think it was gonna happen. But at the end, it really did happen. Um, Geo becomes the new, um, boss, the new boss of uh, the whole organization. And yeah, I was really glad to see how everything falls up, but you know, the characters, I it's just really hard for me to like not get attached from them. It's just, it's just really great. I just love the characters very, very much. I just, I don't know. It was great until the end, and I can't wait for part six. But um, for part five, I gotta say, I enjoy the characters. Geo is just basically like everybody's like hope. Like, like whenever things go down, like I feel like G- Geo or Joel just like lines everybody just like they're fighting spirits and everything it's just to keep moving like I'll be I feel like basically he's just excuse me the motivation and everything and it was just sad to see but dude I thought excuse me I thought he was gonna live to be the end but like damn like that really hit me hard when he died when it was just uh, I really wanted him to, to succeed as well to becoming the new capital the new boss and everything but Things did have um, different turns, and I did not even expect it to even have the different turns in the first place. But um, yeah, there's more. A lo- there's more context be- behind it about how this boss, big boss, is just basically like a like a like organization slash gang, whatever. Just your typical. Yeah, they do stuff like assass. They have like groups of you know assassins, people who deal with drugs. Yada yada yada, all <clears throat> all all that stuff. But you know, Giovanni basically became the new boss, and I really want to see how this ties into part six. And yeah, I really can't wait to see what more or how many parts more does JoJo Bizarre Adventures have to offer. Because I would keep watching it till I don't know the day I die or something. Because it is really really amazing for me to experience like this bizarre adventure that i that i just kept watching for maybe like maybe i think it's been like if i had to guess i think it's been probably like if i had to add up all the total days that i watched this not counting like one day i didn't watch it so i think i feel like it's been like a good solid month or two like i may watch like an episode or two, but all in all, really, really dig it. But let's get into my three things that I listed earlier. So, my favorite character or in protagonist in all five parts of JoJo's Bizarre Adventures is none other than Joseph Joestar. Again, in part two, I love his character, I love his charisma. His personality and everything really great and i love him more in part three when again his um voice actor just talks in english saying oh my god and everything i i just had an amazing time just um watching old man joseph just like do his thing and just reacts and just talks in english really hilarious loves character he will always be my number one excuse me joe star in the whole joe star timeline or tr- family tree or something. I don't know. My favorite opening uh, out of all five, I gotta say, is part four, Crazy Bizarre Town. I vibe with it every single day. I just get... Mm, it's just like I get different emotions from listening all five parts of it, but generally they would all rely... The, uh, generally at the end, it would all just basically just hype me up even more. That's all I get from it, just basic hype. Like, that's pretty much it. And then, my favorite part. So, I really had to think this one really carefully. But at the end of the day, I gotta go with my gut and everything. And what I said earlier, I love part for Diamond Unbreakable. Because 
they did something a little bit different that made it, I feel like, more unique than the other ones. Not saying like the other parts are bad. They're really good and enjoyable to watch. But it's just, I feel like part four does it differently in, in its own way that just makes it enjoyable for me to watch even more. But there's nothing bad about the other parts. Like I said, they all, they, all five parts are really great, but my favorite one, in my opinion, is part four. Because I love how they the, how they just treated like all the characters differently, and it's not the same typical, um, you know, people trying to kill you and all that stuff. And yeah, that's just gonna be it for my you know George's Bizarre Adventures. I can't wait for part six if if it's gonna come out this year or next year. I will keep up my state and sources of part six to see when it's gonna come out, and I will talk more about that on my second channel and everything. And again, like. Like before I even rate, like before I even even like say anything, automatically Jojo Bizarre Adventures is a perfect ten out of ten, in my opinion. Love the characters, love the plot of being like different events and timelines and everything. I really enjoyed watching every single part of Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. All the different characters, all the different um. Uh, different little mini plots in those timelines and everything and it was really enjoyable to watch all of it all in the end and damn i just can't wait for you know for part six because i thought that part five was going to be how part four how old man joseph adopted the invisible girl to be you know his daughter and everything and i thought that was going to be part five but i could be wrong that could be part six but anyways ladies and gentlemen let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section about JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. If you love it or hate it and everything, my gosh, this is the longest anime review I've done. And I think, like, the second one I did was, like, I think it was, like, fairy tale. But this is, like, the number one longest review of jo of an anime of all time. JoJo's Bizarre Adventures really takes the kick on this one as being my personal top Ten now it's like i will do a top 10 anime list soon i just need to figure out my thoughts about you know other animes and compare it to how i love jojo as well but yeah i hope more parts of jojo's bizarre adventures comes but anyways ladies and gentlemen i will see you all in the next one and i hope you all have a wonderful morning night day evening whatever the occasion is and i will see you all in the next one peace